Hello there. I first want to thank you for clicking on this video. Um, thank you for being willing to spend a little time with me. I, before I get right into it, and that's what I was going to do, let me tell you my name in case this is your first time seeing me first time on my channel. So my name is Ashley. Um, some people call me Ash. Um, and I am so excited to share with you um, today. I want to talk about anxiety um, and to encourage you essentially just to breathe and to continue to grow into the amazing person that you are. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Um, I've got dinner on my mind, okay? It's already prepared, it's in the kitchen. So let's just have this little talk so I can get. So the first thing that I wanna say is with anxiety, with stress, with worry, with any of um, those negative icky feelings is the first piece of advice I ever give to anyone is to feel your feels. And that's what I tell myself whenever I'm going through any of these things. Honey, it's okay to acknowledge how you feel, not to try to pretend that you feel exuberant and you're over the moon and everything is beautiful and perfect. And when we have those moments of being disappointed or being unsure or uncertain about what's to come or being fearful for us to acknowledge that um, and then to ideally take them to God. Now, as soon as I think about anybody um, in the Bible who stands out to me as someone who really feels their feels, I think of David. Listen. That man was so dramatic, okay? I think I'm dramatic, but David far beats me. And that's actually reassuring to me. So when I'm really in my feelings, I can think, hey, I'm not the first person to feel this way, to question this. David also was like, Lord, are you just going to ignore me? You are omnipresent, so you see you are everywhere and you're seeing everything. You're omniscient, so you know how I feel and um, are you just going to ignore me? Are you not going to do anything about it? Um, so David was very vocal in the Bible. He, let me read a couple of the verses that he, where he talked about what he was feeling. Um, in hopes that that will encourage you to just talk to God. Literally, just tell him how you feel. Um, so Psalm 13, verse 2 to 3 says, How long, Lord, will you utterly forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I carry sorrow in my soul, grief in my heart, day after day? How long? Another Psalm, Psalm 22, verse 2 to 3 says, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why so far from my call for help, from my cries of anguish? My God, I call by day, but you do not answer by night, but I have no relief. So all of those are examples of David saying exactly how he felt to God. And I just want to encourage you to do that. We know that talking to a friend helps. We know that talking to a therapist helps. And I for sure encourage you to do that, to do either of those as you think is needed and as you are able to. Just the same as this talk therapy helps, getting things off of your chest. It's just the same and even more powerful when you just tell God how are you feeling what it is so do it um in addition 
another reason it's important to do that and really I'm encouraging you to pray because praying is really just talking to God um, so another reason to do that is we know that God wants us to bring our feelings to him we know that God cares and he's fair um, another verse in the Bible Psalm 34 verse 5 says those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy which suggests to me or means to me that you know regardless of the dark place that you might be or the less than sunny place that you might be when you look to him when you turn to him when you wait on him he will give you what you need so that you can be radiant again that's a promise that he gives and um, I believe that I know that God keeps all his promises he says it in his word that he keeps all his promises and and that's the truth that I've experienced in my own life and then finally in my you see I'm really I'm really trying to convince you that it's a good idea to just tell God how you feel do you do you see that all right, one more verse. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all who are weary, all who are tired from carrying heavy loads that might be stressed, that might be worried, that might be whatever heavy load, and I will give you rest. All right, so there is, on the one hand, praying and bringing your feelings to God, and then in tandem, also important is for you to trust that God is hearing you and that he will work on your behalf. Just that he's got your back and he really does. Um, so that's pointer number one. Pointer number two is a longer one. It's rest, breathe, and remember rest breathe remember so i was encouraged to encourage you to rest based on first kings chapter 19. now um i won't pull up i won't tell you the whole story so go read it but essentially this prophet in the bible was frustrated he was ready to give up he was tired all this um, he was worried about some things going on and God sent an angel to him to give him food to say, hey, take a minute and take care of your body. So gave him food and told him to get rest. And I want to say it was the next day, but definitely a second time an angel came again to give him food. So that points out to me just the importance of resting and of doing the other things that are needed to take care of your body. So it might be eating healthy. I Some people, when they're stressed, they're eating, you know, goes awry. Eating healthy. Um, sleeping, drinking your water, getting up and moving a little, taking a walk, maybe even a gratitude walk. And I did a video on that. So I'll put the link um, in the description or something. Um, or doing some yoga, doing a workout, something to get the body moving. And then breathe. I... So lots of mental health um, things encourage you to breathe, right? And lots of the practices that are thought of as being or known to be healthy focus on breathing or involve breathing. Um, um, we know that breathing calms the nervous system and that's taking deep focused, deliberate breaths. So that might be as simple as inhaling and counting in your head to four and exhaling slowly counting in your head to four. Or a more popular 
way of doing some focused breathing is doing the four, seven, eight. So that is breathing in for four seconds, holding your breath for seven seconds, and then exhaling for eight seconds. Um, and since I'm not gonna go into scripture that might support the importance of this deep breathing, I'm just gonna say, honey, inhale his peace and exhale everything else, all the stress, the worry, the anxiety, all the negative. Inhale, receive, exhale, let go. And I want to encourage you that God wants to give you his peace and that God can renew your strength. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, do not fear, I am with you. Do not be anxious, I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. So, and that's one of the things to remember. So this point here is rest, breathe, remember. Rest your body, take care of your body. Breathe also is taking care of your body, but it helps with your mind, it calms your nervous system, it helps you just to calm things down. And then thirdly, Remember that God is with you, that God cares, he is near, he is there, um, and he is in control, he is powerful, he is willing to help you. So remember that. Um, let's see if there's anything else. A couple more verses that I hope that you remember, that I hope that encourages you today. One is, no trial has come to you, but what is human? God is faithful and will not let you be tried beyond your strength. But with the trial, he will also provide a way out so that you may be able to bear it. Isn't that really encouraging? So it's saying, hey, you're going to experience things at, point in your, at points in your life. Maybe you're experiencing some now. Maybe this video is reminding you of some of um, the things that you've gone through. But it's saying, hey, you will never come up on anything that um, you can't make it through, that God will not give you the strength to make it through. So trust that. Um, there's a saying that it will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, that means it's not the end. So don't give up because it's not the end. It'll, it'll be okay soon. All right. And then one of my favorite verses is in Joshua chapter 1. Um, I'll read verse 9 and verse 5 and verse 9. It says, no one can withstand you as long as you live. So no one can defeat you, what have you. Um, this is God talking to Joshua. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I command you, be strong and steadfast. Do not fear nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And I made a note to share that verse or those verses with you because one of the quickest lies that the enemy tries to get us to believe is that we are alone, that no one else understands us, um, understands what we're going through. No one can help us. Um, but this verse is telling us, is reminding us that that's not true. God is always with us wherever we go and he's always fighting on our behalf. And while his timing might not be your timing, so you might be saying, well, God, you, you know, you might just work it out now. You might just solve it now. Um, his timing is not our own. And so he might not do it when you want him to, but trust and believe he is working on your behalf. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Okay. Now this is one, and this might be the last one that I share with you. Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 4. I absolutely love these verses. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and you can insert your name, O Ashley, O whatever your name is. 
and formed you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. And so while I don't know who exactly is watching this video right now, God knows and he has called you by name. He is calling you by name even now to say, hey, hun, I've got it. Just, you know, come to me in prayer. Just get it off your chest. Just rest. Just breathe. Just remember that I am good. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the water, I will be with you. In the rivers, you shall not drown. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. The flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Because you are precious in my eyes and glorious, and because I love you. So how do we know that God's going to come through? Because he loves us and he sees us as precious and worthy of saving um, and helping and what have you. And my final point is to worship. Instead of worrying, just worship. Or when you feel the worry creeping on or the stress or the anxiety, just worship. Um, sing a song or just say you know god i acknowledge that you're good god i acknowledge that you're great um god i know that you're there for me i thank you for waking me up today um worship give thanks so friend i hope that that encouraged you i hope that that will be one or this video will be one of the tools in your toolbox for dealing with the icky emotions that life sometimes brings um whether it's worry stress fear anxiety depression um loneliness whatever it might be remember that god is near he is there and he wants you to bring um, whatever you're going through to him he wants to love you through it and to remind you that you will get through it so take care all the best breathe and bloom bye bye <laughs>